So blue zones are all the rage lately. And part and parcel with all the hype about blue zones is that purportedly people that live in blue zones, which by the way, have exceptional longevity, meaning a higher percentage of people that live in blue zones reach their 100th birthday and beyond. But it turns out that people that live in blue zones don't always eat a plant-based diet. We're going to talk about a paper titled Sardinian Dietary Analysis for Longevity, a review of the literature. So you know Sardinia is in Italy, and it turns out that men of Sardinia live exceptionally long compared to men in other parts of the world. Well, you would think that based upon all the reporting, the sensational reporting of Blue Zones and the Seventh-day Adventists and all these things, that these men eat a plant-based diet primarily, but it turns out that these individuals eat a diet rich in animal products, and that was exemplified or uh, characterized in various different studies or analysis, particularly this one right here that I just mentioned that was published in the journal of ethnic foods in 2022. So ancient Sardinian foods include roasted lamb intestine, horse steak, pigeon, sea urchin roe, as well as botargo, which is a traditional Sardinian food product made by salting and drying the ovaries of mullet fish. Botarga is different from most other fish roe products given that this roe is directly cured inside the ovaries as opposed to being extracted first. So it's important to acknowledge that these men and also women of Sardinia actually eat a lot of animal-based products. And if you just Google image uh, foods that people in Sardinia eat, you will see plates of yogurt, cheese, raw dairy, various other animal-based uh, food products. It turns out that they rely heavily on the consumption of dairy products, particularly goat and sheep milk, as well as uh, other dairy products. So I think it's just important to acknowledge that you know, when we see a documentary, and by the way, I, I've watched some of these Blue Zone documentaries and so forth. Uh, Dan Butner has, has arguably done a pretty good job, but obviously he has a bias. He's a very uh, plant forward individual. And so we're seeing a lot of that uh, being conveyed through these documentaries. But uh, another thing that isn't talked about in these documentaries is that exercise and movement and community and all these other intangible factors that are uh, related to diet, of course, but also contribute to possibly exceptional longevity and the high prevalence of centenarian uh, individuals in these uh, populations. But uh, going on with diet specifically, it turns out that people of Sardinia eat a lot of snails. And so this is considered a famine food since the Paleolithic era in the Mediterranean regions. The consumption of snails may help prevent mineral deficiencies, uh, blindness, osteoporosis, and, and so forth. So again, it turns out that you know, these documentaries are really promoting a plant-forward diet, but the food products that these individuals are consuming are traditionally made. And as we uh, have talked about Eat Like a Human, the book by my friend Bill Schindler, he goes into how uh, how these ancient grains, uh, like sourdough bread, for example, to rise and ferment uh, for many, many days before uh, processing into actual bread. So the grain products or the plant products are completely different from the plant products that people buy from the grocery store, the plant uh, or the meat alternative that are derived from plant foods, for example. Um, you don't see uh, individuals in blue zones eating a lot of canola oil or sunflower oil, industrial seed oils, or the hyperpalatable processed uh, plant-based meats alternative. So uh, it's important that there is ample evidence to show that even in blue zones where people live uh, exceptionally longer than the average American, they eat a lot of raw dairy, fermented grain type products, uh, different types of fish products, lamb, pork, uh, you name it. Uh, so I think it's important to acknowledge that, you know, perhaps you can include these foods in your diet in addition to in incorporating more community, more recreational and non-recreational exercise, walking to work, for example, walking to the gym, uh, all these different things. It turns out that Sardinia is very hilly. And so these people uh, will, will walk up hills to go visit a friend or a family member, particularly you know, after meals, walking has been shown to be very effective. But I just thought this paper was quite important to uh, share with you because a lot of people just see the headlines in the documentary. And then when they go to the grocery store, they see plant-based and they're getting plant-based Cheerios, plant-based M&Ms, plant-based Oreos. Believe it or not, Oreos is now advertising as plant-based. In fact, needless to say, many of the unhealthiest foods that you can possibly get, Coca-Cola, uh, all sorts of soda products, even alcohol, cocaine, uh, tobacco, all these things come from plants. I'm not trying to demonize plants, not saying they're the enemy. I have a garden, I have vegetables, uh, you know, we eat all sorts of uh, plant-based products around here, but 
um, thinking that they are somehow always superior to animal-based products and that having raw dairy or raw cheese or any red meat is going to you know, be inherently unhealthy is just falling into this tribalism dichotomous thinking that uh, if, it, if it's derived from an animal, it must be bad. If, if it's plant-based, it must be healthy. That dichotomous thinking, we saw that throughout the COVID pandemic. Everyone needs to mask or you're going to kill grandma. Th these are the, the problems uh, in present day modern culture where we get into this tribalistic mentality and this dichotomous thinking really leads us uh, to make poor decisions. And so I think it's important that we understand the natural bias for humans to fall into this binary dichotomous thinking camp, but it's important to acknowledge that there are nutrients in animal-based foods that are ex really healthy uh, and can avert different diseases. We reviewed that 12-week study where individuals went on a uh, animal-free diet and they had increases in bone mineral breakdown, uh, entelopeptide and markers of collagen breakdown increased, suggesting that when people go on a plant-based diet, they start to lose bone uh, and have challenges with collagen synthesis. So, you know, if you've been swindled by this push, you know, many of these people that are promoting this narrative have financial gain in the companies that are heavily investing in these meat alternatives. This is a massive industry. Many of the big uh, names out there, Bill Gates and, and fill in the blank, are uh, heavily invested in all these uh, alternatives, uh, lab-based meat or lab-grown meat, um, synthetic, you know, cheeses and things like that derived from plants and so forth. So, uh, it's important to acknowledge that even people in Sardinia that live exceptionally longer, uh, especially compared to Americans, eat raw dairy, they eat raw cheese, they eat red meat, they eat fish, they eat all these things. And uh, they have a much lower prevalence of cardiovascular disease, dementia, diabetes, all the common ailments that impact uh, most Americans nowadays. So definitely check out this paper. Uh, and if you enjoy this video, uh, hit that like button. Be sure to leave a comment below and forward this to a friend who may benefit from this information. And we'll catch you in a future episode down the road. Bye now.